With our next model, we will observe the photoelectric sensor once again, which we know is composed of a lamp and a phototransistor. It is exactly the same function in this model. It detects the presence of an object. In this case, if it detects a colored block, the program will instruct the mini-motor to start, which will then make the conveyor belt move. Next, the colored block passes through another sensor, the color sensor. This sensor is in charge of classifying the blocks according to their color. How does it work? Simple, this sensor has two components, a red light emitter and a phototransistor. Colors are identified according to the intensity in which red light rebounds to the phototransistor. The variables that come into play here are frequency and wavelength. According to the frequency and wavelength that the sensor receives, the color will be identified, as every color has a certain frequency and wavelength. But, why does the emitter emit red light? Good question, the color red is the color with most wavelength in the visible light spectrum. This gives us the capability of identifying any color with less or equal wavelength than the color red. For example, if the sensor detects a blue block, it will send a signal to the interface. As a result, the program instructs the blue light to activate. The mini motor will begin rotating again and the conveyor belt will send the block to the ramp. The second mini motor will also start and it will move to the position that corresponds to the colored cell. This is possible thanks to the switches that can be observed here. When pressed, they indicate the position in which the motor is. When the switch corresponding to the cell is pressed, the motor will stop. We will now see how it works. The fourth model has three functions. 1. With the ultrasonic sensor, detect the proximity of an object. This sensor sends ultrasonic waves into space and receives rebounded waves from objects in a similar way to the color sensor. The only difference is that now the sensor emits ultrasound, not light waves. Proximity is an important factor in the next functions. 2. With the actuator, which is the motor with integrated encoder, the model moves 180 degrees back and forth. This kind of motor gives us the ability to be very precise in the number of rotations of the motor. The mini motor that we have seen on past models would be useless in models that require exact values because it is not very precise. 3. If an object is close to the ultrasonic sensor, the emitted waves will rebound on the sensor and will then tell the interface that an object has appeared. The program then sends a signal to the motor. It stops until the object is removed. The sensor detects this when the waves are no longer rebounded. We will now observe how it works. In our fifth model, we have an infrared sensor. This sensor measures infrared electromagnetic radiation in the area through which it passes. We mentioned earlier that the color red is the last visible color, or the one with most wavelength in the visible light spectrum. Infrared literally means below red. This means that this kind of radiation has a greater wavelength than any visible color. That is why human eyes cannot see infrared light, but this sensor can. This sensor has the role of detecting white spots in our model. The infrared light emitted from objects is different according to their color. According to the intensity in which infrared light travels to the sensor, the sensor will identify the color. If the sensor detects white, it will send a signal to the interface and subsequently, the buzzer will activate. The buzzer is the only actuator of the model. 
We will now see the model in action. Can observe an object in the interface. This object is an anti seether emitter, which is a sensor that varies its resistance according to temperature. In our model, its role is to detect temperature changes and display temperature values on the interface screen. You may try it by placing carefully your fingers over the thermistor. You must now observe a change in temperature in the screen. We have finished the presentation. We hope that you have learned new concepts and ideas during this demonstration. In the fields of mechatronics and robotics, it is essential to know these basic concepts. We encourage you to apply what you have learned in your own creative models and to seek further information on the topics seen here. Good luck.